Morgan Evans. Yeah. Douglas Elliman. It's good to have you here. Thank you. I'm glad uh, to be here. You're, you're, you're not just a great real estate agent, but you're also my, my good pal. I appreciate that. We've had some fun. We have, haven't we? I think so. Uh, I think most recently our excursion out to Sheep's Head Bay. That was quite an experience. That was, that was interesting. Tell me a little bit about how you ended up in New York City. How did I end up in New York City? It's it's a uh, it's a good story. You What's know? So uh, kind of simple. I uh, I was at a real estate conference in uh, Palm Springs, and Eileen was also at the same real estate conference. Tom Ferry, you know, one of the big the big time coaches. Yeah, shout out to Tom Ferry. So uh, yeah, definitely. And um, you know, one of the one of the jokes is that you know you could uh, sign up for. Tom Ferry for real estate coaching, but it also could be a matchmaking service because that's what it ended up being for Eileen and myself. Nice. So uh, Eileen and I, we met and um, we hit it off, you know, of course. And uh, it was, uh, they wanted people to get partners to do some role playing, oh. right? You know, some real estate, you know, like practice <laughs> scripts and everything. Right, right. So we, you know, we kind of took that uh, like literally, yeah. you know, so uh we, uh, you know, at first we met on the last day of the conference. Were you like, I'll play the husband and you'll play the wife? You know, I'll play the, <laughs> you, you play the closer and I'll, you know, I'll be the buyer here. Nice. And, you know, and she, she always likes to say how she closed me on, uh, you know, moving to New York. <laughs> nice. Which not surprising that she, you know, was able to do that to me. She's a hustler. Yeah, it's true. She's good, man. So, uh, so yeah, you know, just, uh, did that, met Eileen and, uh, probably about less than a year later, New York City. That was it. May of probably May 2008. Now you were selling real estate, obviously in Seattle. That's how you ended up at the conference. I did. Yeah, I was uh, selling houses and all that in Seattle, and you know, doing well and having fun. And moving to New York, did you think the transition into selling real estate in New York was going to be easy? It was not easy. Um, I mean, I guess if you look at it, I came May ish. You know, basically 2008. So the market ha- was kind of going down the tubes and going down the tubes kind of fast, that, yeah. that kind of timeline. Right. So uh, when I got here, it was definitely a, a learning curve. I mean, obviously the market became very tough, but just going from Seattle to New York, you know, just the mentality of, you know, two different cultures and then just also kind of like learning brand new product, you know, going from selling houses, selling, you know, some, some, some condos um, to just, you know, selling in these big buildings and, Right. You know, learning the new neighborhoods and all that stuff was definitely kind of a uh, a challenge. But was it fun? It was definitely fun. Yeah. You still having fun doing it? Of course. You come over here from Seattle to, to the New York market. You come at a time that's, you know, one of the most vulnerable times in in the real estate market in, in recent history. Was there ever a point where you thought, geez, you know, maybe I should maybe I should seek another career or or did you know that this is you're going to ride it out what was what were you thinking yeah i would say there was no alternative you know so it was just it was kind of full steam ahead as time goes on it's going to get better nice you know was there anything in particular that helped you carry through that market as far as um maintaining uh a place in the real estate uh, business? I think it's definitely helpful. I mean, just having obviously Eileen here, you know, she, I mean, she had already had this sta- well, kind of an established business, right? So, I mean, she was kind of, you know, showing me the ropes and that had to be the, like the most like helpful, right. you know, piece that kind of like got me through it was just, you know, having somebody who, you know, who was, who was successful and who knew how to, you know, basically kind of like, you know, like grow a business. Nice. So it's been uh, 10 years since you've been- It has been. In the business here in New York City. In New York City, yes. In those 10 years, is there any one particular uh, story that stands out, uh, like a crazy real estate story? We we have a listing in uh, like Midtown East um, and a few years ago, and uh, it's a little studio. And uh, so we, it's you know been on the market maybe a few weeks. We have our first open house. And there was a tenant in place. So, you know, we tell them Sunday, one o'clock, we're going to have an open house for one hour. If you can just, you know, get out of the apartment for an hour, we'll get this over with. Right. And everybody can do their thing. Right. So, so we show up, uh, you know, maybe 1245, a little, a little early, um, you know, text the tenant, no answer. Right. Then we have the doorman call up, no answer. Right. Now people start showing up in the lobby that they're waiting to get inside, Aye. right? So you, you kind of get a little stressed out, right? You know, Aye. you want the you know the the show to go, yeah. but uh, 
So eventually we go upstairs, knock on the door. The tenant opens up the door. They had been asleep the whole time. So this uh, this young lady had uh, basically, I think, had a late night. You know, it was it was the day after Halloween. Oh boy! Right? She had a late night, and uh, at this point, we're just happy that she opened up the door. Yeah. Right? Because we didn't have keys to the apartment. Right. So she's uh, looking worse for wear, to say the least. <laughs> And she says, I, I can't, I can't leave. I can't, yeah. I can't leave. Yeah. Right. So we're thinking, okay, well, let's just, let's just, uh, you know, go with the flow here. And, uh, she's like, I'm going to go, I'm going to go back to sleep. All right. In a studio. In the studio. A studio that's probably, <laughs> I would say this is one of those, this is a studio that's really a studio, the size of a hotel room. Right. A studio. Like right. Probably 300 square feet-ish, right? <laughs> She's just going under the blankets? It's a, it's a room with a king-size bed and a TV and that's about it, right? So she, <laughs> go, she goes back to sleep and we, so Eileen's upstairs and then I go back into the lobby and I go, I go, all right, everybody, we're going to go see this apartment right now. <laughs> and... I gotta, I gotta warn you. The tenants up there, and they're, they're gonna be in the apartment, and we're just gonna. They don't care, so we don't care. We're just, we're, we, we're gonna do it. All right. <laughs> we just go on with it. So we go upstairs, and there's probably, let's say, the first group of people. You know, maybe six or seven people. Yeah. The tenants just had passed out. She's in the underneath, like uh, in, underneath the covers on the bed. Oh my god. Just, just sleeping. Oh my just god. sleeping, right? The whole time. She didn't, she didn't move at all, <laughs> right? And you know the people are, are looking around, pointing at her and everything. I just go, hey, it's it's fine. Take a look at the apartment. Yeah. You know, just it is what it is. It is let's, what it is. Let's do it. Did you, you know? did you sell that place? We we did end up selling it. So it didn't. Uh, did the tenant leave when it was sold, or did she just stay there? She did leave. Yeah. She did leave. She eventually we, uh, woke up. Though. She was uh, very nice. Yeah. It was a very nice. Ex- I mean, we've had far worse exchanges with you know with tenants sometimes. You yeah. know, they were. She was just. She was tired. You know, she just had gotten off work probably yeah. and. Uh, just needed to take a break and now you, I, you know, and I know, like I, I know you personally, so we've spoken about things like this before. You had mentioned if there was a, a few listings that you've had that there's been tenant in place. I mean, this has to be one of the most challenging things. Uh, how do? You, what's the best way of dealing with it? I mean, do the owners typically get involved, or they kind of say like, you know what, you deal with it. We work with a lot of investor owners, you know, renting out their apartments, you know, uh, helping them buy, helping them sell, that whole thing. So, yes, we do run into tenant in place scenarios quite often. Some tenants are easy to work with, other times, not so much. It's just having maybe try to have a conversation, kind of setting the stage with the tenants, how, how things you would like them to go. Yeah. You know, and then at the end of the day, sometimes, you know, you might have had that conversation up front, but. They don't. They don't run as uh, as well as you'd hope for. Well, I guess they're thinking, you know, is like, what's it to me? You know, like this is where I live. You, you're you're the broker selling for the owner who I pay rent to. You know, I didn't sign up for this. It's probably their attitude. Like, I don't need you to interrupt my life. Sure, and I I think I, I totally understand that they are not. We have different interests here. Right. They're trying to. You know, they're paying the rent. Is there any way to? You know, I've heard other brokers like you know kind of. Here's a, here's a, a little gift certificate. Or something. Yeah, a gift. Go go to the brunch on me, or here's a go for go to the spa for an hour. You know, my I guess my problem with that is you try to incentivize, but what if that still doesn't work? <laughs> I, I understand the 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 idea, but it may just set a precedent that like. What about the time where I really need to get in? That's that time you have a second showing, third showing, they're bringing the parents back to look yeah. at it or friends or the contractor and the tenant has a, you know, maybe they're just not in the mood that day or whatever and you can't get in. When Obviously when those things happen, I think you gotta, you gotta dial into the owner real quick and say, hey, you know, this is what, this is what we're dealing with. So yeah. at least maybe they can reach out to the tenant and at the very least that they know what the problem is. You know, right. that, that this is not a, you know, a, the best case scenario. Gotcha. Gotcha. What's like your apartment where you're like, you walked in, you're like, wow, this, I see, I've seen a lot of apartments. This is the one that was like, man, it, it, the one I'd actually want to live in. We have been in some of the most amazing spaces in the city from townhouses to penthouses to, um, you know, definitely, um, we did a project for Xtel at 157 and we got to shoot a bunch of those apartments there and the views of Central Park 
from the 61st floor, it's insane. It's mm-hmm. insane, you know, what you see. There's been apartments uh, that I've been in, like, say, on Central Park West that are old New York, like real old New York, uh-huh. you know, massive 12 rooms, you know, wood paneling, but, like, in pristine condition. Okay. That you walk in there and you're just, it's like a time warp. So it sounds like you're like a, like a Central Park view guy. Oh, God, yeah. I'm an uptown guy. I mean, I was born and raised in Brooklyn and then I moved to Manhattan. I moved to 63rd Street on the east side. Now I live on 63rd Street on the west side. I don't go below 63rd Street, apparently. I love going downtown. Downtown is a whole nother it's a whole nother beast. Uh-huh. Um, but I've always I've always lived up in the sixties. East and West. So I love Central Park. It's what would the city be without Central Park? I, not the same city. Not even remotely close to the same city. So Central Park's an important Central place. Central Park is that's it's a very that's, important that's place. place. All right. It's a very important part of the, this city being what it is, is having that gigantic green space in the center of the city. Sure. I agree. Uh, I mean if it was just filled in with neighborhoods and buildings like a big like one big uh one big condo tower right in the middle <laughs> what do you think i don't think it's out of the question i mean based on you, you what you see going up i don't think it's completely out of the question i'd like to think that the powers that be would be able to make sure that that never happens sure but i don't think never is in the vocabulary of this city um i've seen so much change in the years i mean i've lived here my entire life so i've seen so much change here over that time that i mean think of you know where we are now in the west 60s 25 years ago this was a swamp it didn't even really exist yeah you know the whole riverside boulevard was not it didn't exist sure well, that's true you know yeah it's um, still getting built in and a lot of you know a lot of new buildings around here no it's like hudson yards right it's completely new yeah that's you know, true hudson yards we used to be um, a McDonald's on the corner of 34th and uh, 11th. I, I right? love that was a nice the big parking 24/7, lot. 24 yeah. 7, right? Yeah. And then you had uh, the train yard. Right. So there was no reason to be over there. And yeah. now it's a it's like Toronto just popped up. Come you on. know, it's like an entire city just popped up on, right. uh, you know, in, on the west side of Manhattan. So um, it certainly is interesting to see what's going on. But if you think about it, it's like, you know, there's all this building going on and all these great things like the High Line is there and, um, you know, all these little parks everywhere. But there's nothing like Central Park. Nothing. I like Central Park. It's, what's yeah. not to like? Yeah. You guys live on the west side. We do. You're, you're right there. We're just a few blocks away. You yeah. got, you know, um, and you do a lot of business over here on the west side. You have a lot we of business do. at the Dorchester. Yeah. What's your best advice for any anyone thinking about? Getting into real estate. So am I, am I like uh, giving advice here to like yeah. my future competitors? Is that what you're asking me to That's do? That's one way of looking at it. You know, like if I was going to go into the video production business, how can I do that? <laughs> I would Put say. Me I, want the, I want the fast track. I would say the fast track to opening a video production company nowadays is um, go out and buy the gear and uh, put a couple of samples together online. Okay. And then, uh, you know, tell people you're a video producer. I think that's that that's exactly what you need to do for being a real estate agent. Too. All right. No experience necessary. Well, I mean, uh, you know, I think all you need sometimes is you just got to get the real estate license. Right. You know, so, I mean, that's like the easiest step is just you get the license and then you got to, you know, figure it out afterwards. Yeah. So uh, well, there's a lot of figuring out. That's like the good and the bad. Real thing, estate's right? not an easy career. It's not easy, you know, but it's, uh, it's it's easy to get into. Most people take for granted how difficult it is to make it in real estate. Mm-hmm. Uh, what's the statistics? 90, 90% of licensees don't renew their license? You know, I hear that's a s- statistic. That's but a like, staggering number. It seems like a big number, right? Who are these people? I guess we've never met them because they've never done any I deals. I don't know. It's kind of like, who are these people? I don't know. Well, if you think about it, when you do deals, you I mean, when you see the top names in the business and the top brokers, they're typically all the same names. True. So it's 10 to 15, maybe 20% of licensed agents are actually making deals. I think you're, you're probably right. Yeah, I think I'm right. Yeah, of course. <laughs> Listen, yeah. when are we going back to hot yoga? That's the question. When are we going back to hot yeah. yoga? It's uh, like I said, I have to mentally prepare for this. Weren't you telling me a, a story how you were drinking somebody's sweat, you know, in the hot <laughs> yoga? <laughs> They sprayed their sweat on you or when something? They do the, the, when they do the eagle pose and you swing your arm underneath, uh-huh. the dude next to me was just swinging and his sweat was flinging all over me. I ain't went in my mouth. Yeah? Yeah, it was pretty gross. Wow. That's, but, de- that's dedication. 
But uh, it's gross, is what it is. It does. It does sound gross. <laughs> it makes you not want to go back. All right, listen. Um, how do people find you on uh, online? Their website. Uh, real easy. EileenAndMorgan.com. Nice. And uh, social media. What are you big on? Insta. Facebook. What's your What's your social media channel of choice? You know what? My social media channel channel of choice is YouTube. Nice. We're gonna talk more about that. Nice. But I'm I'm like I'm all into YouTube this yeah. year. Yeah. 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 Good. I, I really like YouTube. Good. Good. Most agents are uh, I found uh, haven't taken YouTube as serious as they should. I think 2019. At least our clients will. YouTube's definitely uh, the place right. to be. Obviously with video. Yeah. So it's good to see that you're on there. Good. We're gonna have to check you out. All right. Or just produce more content for you. Let's do all of the above. <laughs> Morgan. Yes. Thanks for joining us on our podcast. Thank you. I really appreciate it. We're going to have to do it again soon. Maybe right. get Maybe get Eileen on here too. Oh, that'll be something. Yeah, right. <laughs> All right, brother. All right, cool. Thanks, man. Thanks. Thanks.